Void Stranger is the latest game from System Eraser, whose previous game, Zero Ranger, was one of my favorite games of the last decade. And they are back with a game that plays nothing like it and like no other puzzle game that's on the market. And the amount that you're going to be able to get in this game is going to depend on your tolerance for a whole lot of Sokoban. We are back to Still Images because literally everything that I'm going to show you here is a spoiler. Our story is that we are exploring a massive labyrinth using the powers of the Void Rod. This magical staff allows us to pick up one tile and place it down anywhere there's an empty space. The limitation is that you must walk into like the direction in order to pick up a tile, which means that you must have at least three tiles wide or three tile long platforms in order to kind of move forward endlessly. And the game itself does not really evolve that level of interaction. Instead, it will layer on ever increasingly levels of difficulty and complexity into the environment itself. And as you explore the many floors of Void Stranger, you'll soon come to see that there is more to this game under the surface, pun intended. The general puzzle difficulty of this game is on the higher side. While again, your limitation by only being able to pick up and place one tile at a time may sound like there's not much to this game, but the myriad of environmental hazards and things that will get in your way will grow and elevate over the course of the run. Each floor or certain floors will have treasure chests that contain locusts, which operate as kind of your extra lives that you can build up. And the bonus crystals can be used to unlock specific bonus screenshots and images if you can find them all. And the game seems very simple like that. Until you die. And the first major kind of revelation of the game is that you have a choice to continue on your run with infinite lives or go back to the very beginning. And if you think that is a spoiler of this game, then you have not seen or heard anything yet. The kind of MO of Void Stranger is that there is always layers and layers of things going on in this game. You'll soon stumble upon very specific clues that, if you can deduce their meaning, can lead you to some very unusual options and items. In order to see this game all the way through, you're going to need to get through a complete run without resorting to Void State, which is again is your infinite life kind of modifier. And there are ways of doing that beyond just getting really good at the game. The real test is as you explore, you will have to do a life or death battle. Hey, it's me, and no, I'm not the monster in the game. I may not even be in Void Stranger, but who knows, that could be a secret. The reason why I'm interrupting this review is that in order to talk about one of the major aspects of whether or not you're going to like or dislike this game, we need to head into somewhat spoiler territory. So consider the rest of this lovely section a little bit of a spoiler zone for the game. So one of the things about Void Stranger is that once you beat the game, and as I said a few minutes ago, you have to beat the game without being in Void status in order to move the plot along. And you see, every time you move things forward in the game, it unlocks something new that changes how the game is played. While there is only 225, I believe, floors in the game, there's a lot more to the game than just those floors. There are secrets that you'll find on several floors that, if you can solve them, they will permanently unlock new items and quality of life features going forward. But you see, in order to get to that point, you need to make progress in the game, and that is kind of both the good and the bad of it. You see, the trick of Voice Stranger, I can't tell you without ruining it, much like telling someone about all the different routes and such that people have been endlessly talking about with Undertale for years now. The brilliance of the game is that 
while your actual interactions with the world around you do not change no matter what items you find, what story beats are introduced, the understanding of the rule set of Void Stranger will grow. And this is where you'll be able to kind of take on puzzles with new philosophies and new strategies as you learn what kind of things you can actually do within this space. And there is a lot going on here. But you see, here's the catch about that. The only forms of major progress, the things that will move the story along and change the story of Void Stranger, rely on you beating the game. So each time you want to try and go for something new or push things in a new direction, that's another 225 floor run through the game. Now, Fans will, of course, say that there are ways of speedrunning the shortcuts and additional items. But you see, the problem is that those items and those quality of life features are only there for the people who are good enough to solve the puzzles. This is not an approachable game by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, in order to even see what you've unlocked and what things you have access to, you have to do a few convoluted steps to exit the game and erase your progress in order to do that. And as the puzzles grow in difficulty, you're going to hit that wall where there's a fantastic story, some really beautiful music in this game, but it's completely buried underneath the difficulty and the increasingly, I should say, complicated puzzles. You see, there is no undo mode in Void Stranger, which means that on puzzles where the difference between success and failure is basically, did I place this one tile down the right spot or did I go to the right spot here, or I lose a life or have to do something else to get around it. And it can be very frustrating to play this game because all the good stuff, the stuff that makes this game worth playing is again, hidden under quite literally, hours of doing the puzzle solving and trying to get through things. And there are puzzles within puzzles in this game. There's something called a uh, nonogram, nanogram, which I've never even thought about solving, which really bodes well for when it gets introduced in my playthrough. And yes, if you're someone who got into trouble trying to solve the meta puzzles of Tunic from last year, this game is a lot worse than that. And again, it makes it a really tough game to recommend because of that. If you are a puzzle fan, there is a lot going on here. But again, even the stuff that I've talked about in this section doesn't even get close to explaining all the myriads of layers and depth that's going on in the story and what the game will introduce if you can get that far in. But that's going to do for the spoiler section, so we're going to get back to the review already in progress. And I still can't believe the fantastic reward I got for finishing that up. With Void Stranger, this is a very tough game to recommend. As I've said, a lot of what makes this game both good and bad is going to be underneath all the different difficulties and layers of the Sokoban. And again, it should be made very obvious by now that if you don't like Sokoban style puzzle solving, stay very far away from this game. Ultimately, I have to say that this is a game that is meant for experts only. I do wish that there may have been a little bit more added in terms of affordances and just some a little bit more accessibility and approachability at the start to kind of get people into the major loop of this game. And a lot of people, I feel, are going to bounce off of this before they can really see anything there is to it. And while people on the forums will talk about how the game is supposed to be meant to be very puzzly and archaic, as we've said around here many times, it doesn't matter how great a game is if people check out before they can even see what the game has in store. Now, I do wonder if it would have been a better idea to, if the player dies a certain number of times or they don't reach like a certain level of progress within X number of playthroughs, just to provide a little bit more of a hint, a little bit more of a push. Because so much of this game is about learning that there is always more to it than what you're actually seeing. 
And it's going to be a shame that a lot of people are going to miss out on a really fantastic mystery simply because they can't figure out how to solve a puzzle. And I would highly recommend, especially once you get to some of the more, uh, I quote unquote, I guess, grittier puzzles in Boy Stranger, to have a guide nearby. And there is certainly no shame in that, especially when you're just trying to make progress to the next big story beat. So with that said, this is definitely one of the more standout games of 2023, but it is a game that you're only going to get out of it what you put into it. And as I said a minute ago, if you're someone who's looking for a very challenging puzzle game to play, one that's going to take a lot of time to find all of its secrets, then Void Stranger is probably going to be your next obsession for the next few months. But if you're someone who likes your puzzles to be on the easier side and a game that you can just really play at your leisure and not have to worry too much about other things, then the layers of depth of this game may end up bearing your interests in it. That's going to do it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to do the YouTubing stuff people tell you to do. If you're interested in more of my thoughts on design, check out my books wherever they are sold. Visit our Discord and Patreon and come back for daily discussions on game design here and on game wisdom where you some of the art and science of games.